Okay, so let me tell you about quadratic programming. So first let me tell you what is a quadratic program. So quadratic program. Okay, so this is an optimization problem. Okay. And that is, it's formulated, you, you can have it in many different ways, and I'm going to formulate what I'm going to call a standard version or a quadratic program in standard form. And different people have different conventions. So, you know, you know, uh, be careful. Okay, so uh, a quadratic program in standard form is an optimization problem. You have to minimize something. So you minimize, okay, one half u transpose q u plus p transpose u subject to a uh, u uh, greater or equal to c. Okay. So you say, what? Okay, well, you can't argue with me. Okay. That's what a quadratic program is. Okay. It's a, you minimize a quadratic term plus a linear term. So q is has to be positive semi-definite, ideally positive definite. So q is a matrix. That's uh, Q that I'm going to I'm going to call its dimensions Q by Q. Okay, P is a vector. Okay, so it's going to have dimensions Q by one. Okay, A is a matrix, and it has dimensions. Uh, let's call it N by uh, Q, and C is a vector. It has dimensions N by one. Okay. So now, in what sense is this an optimization problem? So, you are supposed to find u. So, minimize over u. Okay. And what's the dimensionality of u? The dimensionality of u is it's a q-dimensional variable. So, in r to the q. And so, that's where all this q comes in. So, I'm specifying a quadratic program in standard form. Okay. Now, you know, different mathematical packages may define it in a different way. Sometimes the most the most common way in which packages might differ is instead of a u greater or equal to c, they might have a u less equal to c. Well, that just corresponds to flipping the sign of a and c. Okay, that's not hard to do. Okay. So q, p, a, and c are user-defined parameters. So you get to define these. You get to set these. And implicitly, when you set these, it implicitly defines Q. So you give me a Q by Q matrix, you give me a P by one, a Q by one mate, uh, vector, you give me an N by Q matrix, and you give me an N by one vector. Okay. So these are parameters. Okay. So you can imagine that you feed these parameters, so Q, P, A, and C, you feed them into a quadratic programming algorithm, QP, let me call it QP. And what does this quadratic programming algorithm do? It returns a vector u. Let's call it u star. Okay. And what's the property that that u star satisfies? It satisfies the property that it solves this optimization problem. In other words, among all u's that satisfy my constraints, the one that's returned minimizes the objective. So that's the definition of a quadratic program. Okay. You can't argue with me. That's the definition. Now, it turns out that the mathematicians the optimization folks have figured out eff efficient sort of interior point, you know, uh, methods that can solve these quadratic programs efficiently. Okay. Um, and any reasonably good mathematics package, MATLAB, you know, Python, blah, 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 they all have quadratic programming tools. Now, they may call these, these parameters Q, P, A, and C, they may call them by different names, but essentially all these parameters are there. Okay. And you specify these guys and out pops you start the optimal. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to show you is that we can use such a package okay, to solve the problem of finding the optimal hyperplane, the fattest separating hyperplane. So, in other words, what I'm going to convince you is, is that this is a quadratic program. And once I convince you that this is a quadratic, quadratic program, it will mean that I will have identified what are Q, P, A, and C, and then I can just plug them in okay, and out will pop the optimal use step, the weights that satisfy this, that solve this optimization problem. So let's see what's our optimization problem. Okay. Remember, you are the variables. So what do we have to decide? We have to determine a B and W. So we have to determine B and W. So let's define U equals B and W. So let's combine B and W into one vector because that's the way in which this program is formulated. So we're combining B and W into one vector. 
Okay. And what we want to minimize is one half W transpose W. So we want to minimize one half W transpose W. Here we see that we're minimizing, you know, some complicated thing. One half U transpose QU plus P transpose U. So we have to minimize one half W transpose W. Well, the one halves are both there, so that's convenient. Okay. So let me focus on the W transpose W bit. W transpose W is equal to, okay, um, so now you can, you can fill in the details, is equal to, um, B W transpose uh, zero mm, um, the identity D by D identity okay, uh, the D by one vector transpose of zeros the D by one vector of zeros transpose and the D by one vector of zeros times B W okay, so let's see so when you do this matrix product, you get this times this times this, so that's zero. You get this times this times that, which is zero. Okay. You get um, you get uh, this times this times that, which is zero. Okay. And you get uh, this times this times this, which is W transpose W transpose the identity um, W, which is W transpose that. But now this is just exactly U transpose times this matrix, 0, 0, D transpose, so that's D, you could write that as the D by 1 vector, uh, a vector transpose, 0, D, tr and then I, D by D, U, and so this guy here is our Q. So for us, Q is exactly equal to a matrix, which is 0, a, a row of zeros, a column of zeros and the identity, D by D identity. Okay. All right, what about P? Well, so this is called the quadratic term, this is called the linear term. If the quadratic term is zero, actually, this is called a linear program, but we are dealing with quadratic programming. So in our case, we have the quadratic term, we have no linear term. So P is just equal to the zero vector. Now, how many dimensions in P? One, two, three, four, five. Well, if you solved it and you said D plus one, you're correct. So this is a D plus one dimensional vector of zeros. Okay. Um, so we have identified that this term, one half W transpose W, corresponds to the, the objective in a quadratic program if I set Q this way and P that way. Okay. So that's the first step in sort of mapping any optimization problem to a quadratic program. Identify the optimization variable, so we identified that. Figure out what Q is, we figured that out. And figure out what P is, we figured that out. Okay. Now let's look at the constraints. These constraints look nothing like those constraints. So let's look at the constraints. So one of our constraints is, you know, for example, Y1. We have the constraint Y1, uh, uh, W transpose Xn plus B. W transpose Xn plus B. Okay. So that's equal to Y1B plus uh, Y1 times Xn transpose W. Uh, sorry, X1. This is X1. X1 transpose W. Okay. But now I will observe that this is exactly uh, Y1. Okay, Y1 X1 transpose matrix multiplied by the vector. B uh, W. Because here I get Y1 B plus Y1 X1 transpose W. Okay? All right. And um, this is just U. So this is equal to, so I'll, 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 I'll rewrite it now. This is Y1 Y1 transpose, Y1 Y1 X1 transpose times U. Times U. Okay. Let's look at the second constraint, y2, w transpose x2 plus b, that, 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 that is going to equal y2, y2, x2 transpose u. Okay. And we can keep going, yn, w transpose xn plus b, that, 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 that is going to equal yn, uh, yn, xn transpose times u. Now I can collect all these rows in a matrix. So this is all these together you know, can be captured compactly in one matrix, which is Y1, 
y1 x1 transpose y2 y2 x2 transpose y3 y3 x3 transpose dot 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 yn yn xn transpose so those rows each of these rows i've collected them up in a matrix and now i have my u u okay and in each case i need this i need each of these to be greater or equal to 1 greater or equal to 1 that that greater or equal to 1 so those were my constraints okay so here are all my constraints so here's the first row the second row, the third row, and so on, dot, 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 the nth row. So this has to be greater than or equal to, in the vector sense, of a vector of ones. Okay, so if I call this matrix A, let's look at this matrix more carefully. Well, remember before, we had the, we had the data matrix X, which was 1, X1 transpose. Well, now this row is just multiplied by Y1. This is Y1. So this here is y1 times the row 1x1 transpose. So that was a row in my data matrix, y2 times the vector 1x2 transpose. So you can think of this as I take my rows in my data matrix and just multiply them by the y values. Okay? So we, we, can, we can think of this as the signed data matrix. We call it A, so AU greater or equal to the vector of ones. AU greater or equal to C. We have identified A for our problem is the signed data matrix. Okay, so I'll write it as Y1, Y1, X1 transpose, so that's a row. Y2, Y2, X2 transpose, so that's a row, and so on, Yn y n x n transpose so that's a row so a and this is an n by q matrix n by d plus one q is d plus one and then what is c ah look here c is just a vector of ones so c is just a one vector which i'll write as one d plus one so the d plus one vector that's composed entirely of ones Okay, so let me erase this. We've just derived that. Now let me tell you what we have derived. Okay, so summary. What I have done is I have shown you that this optimization problem, by suitably massaging it, okay, can be put into the standard form of a quadratic program. What that means is that I have to identify Q, I have to identify A, P, and C. So when you get your data, if you set Q this way, if you set A that way, if you set P this way, and if you set C that way, then you feed it into a quadratic program, it spits out U star. Okay. That U star Okay, so it spits out U star. That U star will be equal to B star W star. Your optimal weights and uh, bias. Construct Q, P, A, and C. Feed it into the quadratic program. Boom! It spits out U star. You take the first component of what it spits out. That's your optimal bias. The remaining D components, those are your optimal weights. Okay? So exercise. For our toy data set. Exercise. For our toy data set, I'll remind you. X was equal to 0, 0, uh, 2, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, um, 2, 2. Um, 2, 0, and 3, 0. Okay. And y was equal to so minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So this was our toy data set. Show! Okay, now sit down and do this exercise by hand! By hand! Okay, show that um, q is equal to, well, q is equal to um, um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. They show that A is equal to 0, 0, minus 2, minus 2, 2, 0, 3, 0. Show that P is equal to uh, 0, 0, 0. And show that C is equal to 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay? Like so. Show that. Show it. And then Feed in this QP, so figure out what 
package you're going to use and feed in this Q, P, A, and C. Okay, so feed in these guys, Q, P, A, and C, into your favorite quadratic program solver. Okay, and out should spit. Let's see if you can figure it out. What should it spit out? I'll give you a few seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if you're coming back for the ride, okay, here we go. And if you said this, man, you are fast. Okay, so you, it should spit out minus one, one, minus one. Well, if I, if I put it in, in that kind of vector form, it should spit out minus one, one, minus one. So if you said that, you got it. And why, how do I know that? Because we solved this problem by hand. And we got W1 equals one, W2 equals minus one, and the bias was minus one. Okay, now it turns out okay, that, that this problem, you know, as long as you have at least one positive data point and one negative data point, this is a convex optimization problem, it has a unique solution. And so, you know, we solved it one way, so now the quadratic program must reproduce that solution. Okay, so exercise, go and do it. Okay. In the meanwhile, okay, let me summarize the algorithm for finding the fattest hyperplane, and let's end with a little bit of discussion. Okay, so you know, welcome to the slides again, um, and I'm going to just summarize the algorithm for you. So you have a data set, okay? So the first thing you do is you construct a signed data matrix, which is the data matrix that we had before, but now each row you multiply by the corresponding y value, plus or minus one. So that's the signed data matrix, and you construct your, your, your quadratic form matrix Q, okay, which is uh, uh, zeros in the first column, zeros in the first row, and then you know, the identity in the bottom right. So the identity matrix D by D. Okay. You construct your linear term, your li linear part of the objective, which is just the zero vector, and you construct your vector of ones, which is C. So now you take your, your favorite quadratic programming algorithm, your favorite quadratic programming package, okay, and you feed in Q, P, A, and C into this quadratic programming package. Out it spits U star, okay, and then U star has, you know, two essential components. The first component is the optimal bias B star, and then the remaining D components are the weights W star. Okay. So that's a very simple algorithm. And so the efficiency of this algorithm entirely depends on what algorithm you use to solve the quadratic program, and that's an area of research. There are you know, iterative algorithms, there are uh, you know, interior point algorithms, there's the um, simplex algorithm, and so there are many, 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 many uh, uh, approaches to solve it. But that's not our business. We outsource that to the very good mathematicians, the optimization guys. And then your final hypothesis, you know, is, you know, G of X is, you know, the sign of W star transpose X plus B star. And what is the property that this final hypothesis satisfies? Well, it's a linear separator, so it's a perceptron. So it has all the generalization properties of the perceptron, VC dimension and all of that. But now, it intuitively is the most robust. It's the maximally regularized. It's most tolerant of measurement error. It's the fattest hyperplane that separates the two. Okay, you might wonder what do we do when we can't separate the data and so on. We'll deal with these details later. But now we see this beautiful concept that we can get the fattest separating hyperplane, the most robust separating hyperplane. It's just quadratic programming. Okay. And the nice thing about quadratic programming is we have you know, polynomial time algorithm to solve this problem essentially exactly because it's a convex optimization problem because in, in our case, the, the, the matrix Q is positive semi-definite. So as long as you have at least one positive and one negative data point, boom, okay, you get the optimal separating hyperplane, the fattest separating.